tied and carried outside of my village. The cries of my newborn echo in my vision, forced to listen as they committed the greatest sin on our women. I witnessed the killings of our elders and children, the bodies left unburied for the maggots to finish. I swear if I live, it's only for revenge and a chance to make amends with my family spirit. We travel for a minute through the lands of my native till we reached a port filled with an armada of slave ships, a gunpoint. We was made to strip naked, bathed and fully shaven for the trade examination, placed in a pen with women and men from different tribes and nations that I used to trade with, taken and forsaken by this Captain Hawkins who marched a single file aboard his floating coffin. I hear the chains of the ship and the crack of the whip. My mind is etched with the scripts and I'ma never forget. See, we were stolen and sold from gods to property. Now returning to the throne as I travel on this odyssey. Months had passed, the shackles started ripping my skin off The brother to my right was trying to bite his limbs off We lived off the little we were given And it's a miracle in these conditions anyone was still living Very many of our young people doing very much positive things So when we see that, we have to recognize that and we have to support that We are so glad to have him here to represent the youth of today with us um, Now at this particular time, we're going to have a presentation from the Dr. Vernon Walton, Senior Pastor from Mount Calvary Baptist Church of England. Thank you. Good afternoon. What a powerful presentation. Thank you, brother, for the spirit in which you gave it and for the information which you shared during the presentation. Let's give another hand. Let me, first of all, begin by expressing my sincere gratitude for this opportunity to be able to have a few moments to share with you on this afternoon and certainly express my thanksgiving to all of the sponsoring organizations for providing this opportunity and especially to uh, Brother Cliff Arrington, who was the person who reached out and extended the invitation. This particular monument was one of the high moments uh, being able to uh, lead and to bring organizations together and to finally come to the place where we were unveiling and participating in the dedication of this particular monument. And I am thankful for all of the persons who are not only here today, but many of you shared in that particular afternoon uh, at the unveiling. And so I'm grateful to your continued support and certainly we're reminded that the struggle continues and we should never forget uh, the road that we have traveled and the road that remains to be traveled. And so today we gather, we gather during this pause of moment to pay reflections and homage indeed to this moment. And the truth is as we gather, there still remains some that ask the question, why? Why in fact do we gather? Given isn't it enough that we have In this monument? particular book, there was a story about a people who had been who had gone through and suffered tremendous trial and tribulation. It recounts not only their trial, but it recounts their hardship and the journey in which they had to experience. But also, not only counts and gives us a sneak peek at their hardship, but it tells the story of their triumph as well. In their moment and period of deliverance, they had been instructed to take some stones, in fact, 12 stones. Take the stones and place them at the very place of your deliverance. For the day will come when your children will ask the question, what mean ye by these stones? The answer is given that these stones will be a memorial, not only for you, but more specifically, for the generations that are I to come. I come into the city carrying life in my eyes. And they followed us in their cars with their computers and their tongues crawled with caterpillars. And they bumped us off the road, turned over our cars, but we kept organizing. We kept teaching. We kept believing, loving, doing what was holy, moving to a higher ground even though our hands were full of slaughtered teeth. But we held out our eyes, delirious with grace. We held out our eyes, delirious 
with great calm. I say calm, you sitting still in domestic bacteria. I say calm, come you standing still in double-breasted mornings. Come and return to the fight. The fight for the earth, the fight for our children, this fight for our life. We need your hurricane voices. We need your sacred hands. I say come, sister, brother, to the battlefield. Come into the hood, come into the barrio, come into the schools, come into the prisons, come and caress our spines. Come, 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 come to this battlefield called life, called life, called life. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield. I'm gonna stay on the battlefield till I die. I wish those were my words. But actually, they come from poet, activist, and scholar Sonia Sanchez. And she wrote them for the acapella gospel group Sweet Honey in the Rock. And I had the privilege of hearing Ms. Sanchez speak those words and meeting her just a couple of years ago. I was in Ghana for some reason and adopted that country as my own. And I promised myself that I would do things to get there. It took me 40 years. When the plane touched down, I cried like a baby, for I knew that I had come home. And so it's always a blessing that as we sing this our Negro National Anthem, true to our God, true to our native land, and we have to be true to our native land, Africa, but our own homeland, America. Let us bow in a word of prayer. Most holy and gracious God, we thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you, Lord, for each person who has gathered here for each word that was said, words that touched our hearts and brought back memories. But looking ahead to a better time, we thank you, Lord, for our youth who have participated. And we pray, O oh Lord, for our youth of today and pray that they will learn of the history and not just look at this time now, but look what has passed, but look towards the future that it may be better. Bless us all, dear Lord, and help us to continue in the struggle. Give us the strength, Lord, and give us the courage to go forth. Bless us now in the wonderful name of our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend. This was, you want to say something? I just want to let you know how much the committee and the organizations that took part in this I really appreciate you coming out and joining us today. We want you to tell your friends, family members, anyone you know that we'll be here next year. We would like you to come out, be part of this, take part in it. I hope you have received, you know, uh, oh, just a uh, heartfelt, overwhelming, different information that's going to carry you through and hope you remain in the struggle. <coughs> Do the best that you can. We need good people in the struggle. The struggle is not over, it's far from over. So please be diligent, be committed, be dedicated. Thank you. Have a great day. Have a great life. Live long.